Call the meeting to order for the Village of Wellington Beach. Our board meeting for Monday, March 14, 2016. Please call the roll. Trustee Husk. Trustee Valadez. Here. Trustee Wallace. Here. Trustee Butler. Trustee Mount. Here. Trustee Bennis. Here. Mayor Hill. Here. I thought a quorum show, uh, let the record show a quorum is present. I now turn the meeting over to the Boy Scout Troop 275 and Cub Scout Pack 99 for posting the colors. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. How about a big round of applause? It's always great to have the scouts come out and visit us. A little community service and uh, see what happens in our community. There's plenty of agendas over here for all the scouts. If you guys have a citizenship or anything else coming up, please make sure you grab an agenda tonight. Speaking of the agenda, is there a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Second. Watched by Trustee Mount. Second by Trustee Wallace. Any questions, additions, or relations to the agenda? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The agenda is approved as written. We have our February 2016 Council meeting minutes for our approval. Any corrections or clarifications? If not, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Watched by Trustee Bennis. Second by Trustee Valadez. We have a motion to second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Those council meeting minutes are approved. We have expenditures uh, this month of $1,238,094.18. Some of the larger items in that group are for our health care for our, uh, our staff is $117,000. Lake County Public Works for our sewers, uh, about $293,000. Uh, CLC Joint Action Water Agency for our fresh Lake Michigan water. We have two bills uh, from two different months. One's a little over $143,000 and the other one's a little over $128,000. There are a lot of other bills besides that in the packet. All the staff have reviewed them. The board has had a chance to review them. Any trustees have a question on any of the bills? If not, is there a motion to approve? I moved. Second. Once by Trustee Wallace, second by Trustee Mount. Once again, any questions on the bills? <clears throat> Please call the roll. Trustee Mount. Aye. Trustee Bennis. Aye. Trustee Valadez. Aye. Trustee Wallace. Aye. That's approved. And we'll move on to our committee reports. Trustee Mount. Well, thank you, Mayor. I do have a SWALCO report tonight, and I know everybody is here and anxious to hear everything about the solid waste here in Lake County. Um, the first thing that I want to talk about is our electronic collection. Effective on May 1st, the five electronic collection sites in Lake County will no longer be accepting any electronic products. The state legislation back in January of 2012 um, prohibited all electronics from all landfills uh, you know, throughout the state of Illinois. So it's not a Lake County issue. This is a state of Illinois issue. Uh, Will County, DuPage County have already stopped all their collections. Um, there's just no funding. Uh, there's, the legislation is not providing any solutions or funding for any future collections. We thought we had a contract with another company, and it wasn't cost prohibitive, so uh, we can't do it. So I just want to spread the word. Everything's open until May 1st. Go to swalco.org, you'll see the addresses. The closest to Round Lake Beach is the Grays Lake Public Works, which is off 83 on Berry Street. 
take all those electronics. And on my way here tonight, I saw two of them laying on the side of the road from my house in Country Walk. And, and scavengers won't pick it up. There's no uh, value to it. So just take it over to one of the five sites till May 1st. Household chemical waste collections are held at our Essa Street facility in Gurney. It's right off Route 41. It's by appointment only, um, uh, approximately three days a month. And you can go to swalco.org to make that appointment. And it is, this is a free service for all Illinois residents. Um, one of the things that we're proud of that we started in the last year or so was our pharmaceutical and sharp items collections. Um, we have uh, two bins over at the Relic Beach uh, Police Station, and we also have 26 other police stations throughout Lake County uh, that um, will collect the pharmaceutical and, uh, and sharp needle items. Um, this is a service that not only other counties are coming and checking out what we do, we've had other states to come and say, you know, what are you doing? How do you get rid of it? Can I bring mine? And, you know, the answer is no. We're trying to take care of Lake County right now. We're looking into future. Uh, we want to thank you know, our state's attorney, Mike Nierheim, and everything that he's doing uh, to help us in that. I know he's been and seen all the things going on. I was teasing someone recently. The city of Highland Park had their second or third collection, and they collected over 800 pounds of these, you know, pharmaceuticals. And it's like, I would have thought Highland Park was a small, residential, older community. Where are they getting all this stuff? I, it, it's amazing. Uh, we had our collection, and I believe the chief told me we had about 200 pounds from Raleigh Beach at our last collection, uh, something like that. So uh, it's a good service. So if you, you know, you don't throw anything down the, flush it down the toilet. Um, you, you empty out the medicine cabinets and you bring them to the police departments, okay? Uh, we have a reuse a shoe collection ongoing through various sites throughout Lake County. Uh, you got to remember, for all your solid waste needs, go to swalco.org. And remember, recycle like first, first, trash, trash last. last. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Mount. Any other trustees have any reports tonight? Hey, I know your scotch all here. You're very welcome to stay, but I don't understand if you had something else planned. You're not going to upset us if you have to leave all of a sudden. That's okay. We do have some police department awards coming up, though, which you might want to stick around for. And I'll turn it over to the chief for the mayor's report with the Round Lake Beach Police Department awards. Chief Hare. Don't you drop. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, tonight we have. Uh, two new officers to introduce to the board. Uh, we're also going to have a Purple Heart uh, Award uh, and then three life-saving awards and then our Officer of the Year. So I'd like to start with Roxana St Stanchoyo. Please step up. Roxana Maria Stanchoyo is from a small town in Romania. Her first ride along with a police officer was with her father at the age of three and it made her decide what she wanted to be when she grew up. Roxana moved to the U.S. on February 22, 2008, and that's when she started working towards becoming a police officer. After many years of studying, testing, and hard work, her dream came uh, through, true when she received a call from the Round Lake Beach uh, Police Department with an employment offer. Her biggest accomplishment to this day has been graduating the police academy and becoming what she always wanted to be since she was a little girl, a police officer. She's proud to wear a uniform every day and hopes to honor the badge every day and most importantly make her family proud by helping others. With this accomplishment, she also wants to honor her father who was a police officer and passed on to her his love for this wonderful and fulfilling career. Sir, could you step up please? Please come on up. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Roxana Stanchoyo, I, Roxana Stanchoyo do, solemnly swear do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States 
and the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And that I will faithfully discharge. And that I will faithfully discharge. The duties of the office of police officer. The duties of the office of police officer. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Congratulations, welcome home with you. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. Go back. Jeremiah Scheider. There's so many of them. <laughs> Jeremiah and Roxana went to the academy together and they've been going through this whole process together and it's uh, anybody that has gone it alone, it, uh, it's, a, it's a rough course so it's always nice to have a partner with you to experience uh, everything that you go through. Uh, Jeremiah Scheider was born in Park Ridge, Illinois to his parents Sharon and Ken. Shaidi, after spending his childhood in Illinois and later Nevada, his family relocated to southeastern Wisconsin. When Jeremiah was 10, he admired his cousin Ryan Rodriguez, and seeing how Ryan helped people inspired Jeremiah to choose a similar career path. After graduating in 2010 from Badger High School in Lake Geneva, he started working towards his goal of being a police officer by enrolling in the criminal justice major at the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee and eventually being hired by Round Lake Beach. While attending the academy, he married his wife, Claire, who's here with us tonight. You can see her holding their newborn son, <laughs> yeah. Henry. Uh, their son, Marcus, is also here. Uh, and as I said, uh, born on March 1st, uh, right after he'd become a police officer, is uh, his son, uh, uh, Henry. Jeremiah acknowledges that his family couldn't be more supportive of his career. So if you could please step up. I, Jeremiah Scheithe. I, Jeremiah Scheithe. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution. That I will support the Constitution. Of the United States. Of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And that I will faithfully discharge. And I will faithfully, that I will faithfully discharge. The duties of the office of police officer. The duties of the office of police officer. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Welcome. Thank you. You have to bring your yeah. other bring your yeah. other son too. Yeah, if you're. yeah, bring Marcus. Yeah, I think a good family shot, right, Mary? Yeah, there you go. Now that's a shot. Uh, I bet the mayor likes to get over there. I see he sees babies. You know. Yeah. There you go. I like that. Uh oh. Okay, look this way. Here, right here. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Henry don't care. There you go. There you go. There you go. Good one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No. Okay. Now a few awards. Roger Kalis. Roger, please come up. On, we were a little slow getting to this one. On January 29th of 2015, Roger Kalis responded to the Goodwill store for a subject that was in their store and had just committed a retail theft. 
While taking the suspect into custody, the suspect began to actively resist the arrest. During the struggle, Roger sustained injuries that later resulted in surgery. Roger was recommended for the Purple Heart by his commander in January of 2016, and a committee that met shortly thereafter agreed. So we'd like to uh, honor Roger with this Purple Heart and the certificate. Roger. The next three life-saving awards that we have are a direct result of our uh, initiative uh, with the, op or the opioid initiative. And I'd like to have uh, State's Attorney Mike Nurheim come up to speak a little bit about uh, the opioid initiative in Lake County. Sir? Well, Chief, thank you for having me, and uh, thank you, uh, Mayor and, and the Village Board, for having me out here. Uh, first, congratulations to the officers that are being recognized, Roger. Uh, good friend of mine, and uh, congratulations. Sorry, uh, it's weird to say congratulations for a Purple Heart, but um, <laughs> thank you for your service and your dedication. Um, the Lake County Opioid Initiative has been uh, something that we formed uh, in response to the opioid epidemic that we're all experiencing in, in Lake County, but really all over the country. And I can tell you, from a law enforcement perspective, uh, it is one of the biggest issues that we face nationally, uh, and certainly here in Lake County. Uh, so what we've done to combat that is, is early on uh, in my term, we formed the Lake County Opioid Initiative. And what that is, is it's a basically we've brought together every community partner, stakeholder that you can imagine uh, to work together to combat this issue. And I think that's the key is, is collaboration, because we all know that this problem is not something that just government can solve or law enforcement can solve. This is something we all need to come together on. And the, the Opioid Initiative has over 200 members. Uh, we have law enforcement, we have faith-based organizations, government uh, at every level, federal, state, local, county. Uh, we have pharmaceutical companies, schools, uh, treatment providers, people in recovery, you name it. Anybody that wants to work on this issue is involved in the Opioid Initiative. And I want to thank this village for its support and, and the chief and, and this police department for being active members of the, the opioid initiative. Uh, I'd also recognize uh, Chief uh, J Sullivan, who, uh, Chris Sullivan, who is the executive director of Lake County Metropolitan Enforcement Group, another key partner uh, in this fight. Um, one of the initiatives early on was to put naloxone in the hands of the police. Now naloxone, if you don't know, and, and I know you guys do know, uh, is the life-saving antidote to an opioid overdose. Now opiates can be anything from prescription opiate medication to heroin. And uh, we've lost a lot of young lives, a lot of lives all over Lake County in the past several years, record numbers around the country. And what this initiative recognized was that when there's an overdose and 911 is called, oftentimes the police are going to be the first to respond because the response time is, is generally several minutes prior to any other first responder. So the Opioid Initiative First Responders Subcommittee uh, recognized that why can't we put this life-saving drug in the hands of the police? Why should a police officer stand there while somebody's child or grandchild or, or, grandchild or loved one is literally dying uh, while they're waiting for the other first responders to arrive? So there's a lot of reasons why people don't do this. You can think of cost, you can think of liability, you can always say, well, that's somebody else's job, but not in Lake County. In Lake County, law enforcement stepped up, took a lead, and when we launched this countywide, we were one of only a few counties in the country to launch this program. Now it's happening all over the country. Uh, but Lake County, I can tell you, and, and the citizens of Round Lake Beach that are here tonight, you should be proud to know that Lake County is being watched by every community in the country, and we are a leader nationally for how to combat this issue. Police departments around the country are following our lead. And in a little over a year, 63 lives have been saved by police officers administering naloxone. I think that's an amazing thing, and I think, unfortunately, you don't have to look too far in the media 
to see a negative report about the police. Uh, and, and that's unfair because we all know that every day the police officers are out there in our community saving lives, keeping us all safe. They don't get the credit they deserve. Uh, so I'm very proud to be here tonight to help them get the credit that they deserve because they are literally saving lives and being a part of the solution and really being leaders nationally for how to combat this issue. So that's something we should all be proud of. And on behalf of Lake County, uh, thank you. And thank congratulations to the officers and thank you to the village for supporting this initiative because it's a countywide team effort and we're all in it together and, and we're, really, we're really saving lives. So thank you. January 29, 2016, Deb Lundgren and Ken Lupe were dispatched to the Sitco gas station on Fairfield Road for a suspected drug overdose. Upon arrival, the officers found a 22-year-old female subject on the floor in the back of a vehicle. The subject's face was blue and she was not breathing. Deb Lundgren administered two doses of naloxone. The officers both administered another dose each and then pulled the body out of the vehicle, but there was still no response. Ken Lupe began doing chest compressions until rescue arrived and took the body away. The officers were notified a few minutes later that the female subject was awake and talking in the ambulance on the way to the hospital. Deb and Ken were both recommended for the life-saving award by their commander in February of 2016 and a committee that met shortly thereafter agreed. One thing to note on this and, and that I want to acknowledge is, is how much the fire department does also with this yeah. because as we're there to work with them first, the fire department a lot of time beats us to the scene uh, and was here and uh, continued with the work that Deb and Ken did. So the fire department were, uh, should be recognized also, but congratulations to Ken and Deb. And I think the state's attorney has the award. We had one more life-saving award tonight. Ryan uh, couldn't be with us, but uh, I'll acknowledge the event uh, and the good work that Ryan did. On January 8th of 2016, Ryan Rodriguez responded to an address in the 1500 block of Meadowbrook after a mother had called for rescue because she thought that her son had died from a possible drug overdose. Ryan found the deceased in a bathroom in the home and he had a difficult time entering the bathroom because the body was blocking the door. Ryan was able to enter by himself and based on his experience and training decided to use the naloxone that he was issued by the police department. After the first injection, there was no reaction at all. Ryan asked assisting officers for more injectors and they passed them through the door. When Ryan injected the second naloxone, the subject twitched and began to wheeze. Rescue arrived at this point and Ryan moved the subject so that they could enter the bathroom. Ryan was recommended for the life-saving award by his commander in January of 2016, a committee that met shortly thereafter agreed. So congratulations to Ryan. I will give this to him. Each year employees are asked to nominate peers for our annual officer of the year award. 
We had four officers nominated in, uh, for the year of 2015. Ryan Rodriguez was one, Paul Grace was one, Kevin Kirk was one also, and John Meyer. The awards review committee met and they selected Paul Grace as the 2015 Officer of the Year. Paul Grace was hired in June of 2000, and I remember because I did Paul's background. <laughs> Paul has served the department in many capacities over the years. He was our initial community resource officer, and he has received the Community Service Award from the police department twice. He was our initial crime-free administrator. Not many people remember, but prior to Paul getting involved with National Night Out, we had a few dozen people walking around the community without any real direction. It was Paul's idea to move the National Night Out down to the lakefront, and I think we all know how well National Night Out is running now. Paul returned to patrol in order to be developed as a supervisor, and then Paul decided to go into investigations approximately four years ago. Paul is now the village representative in the Lake County Major Crimes Task Force, and he is known as one of the best detectives in the area. Paul was recognized by the city of Zion, the village of Gurney, and the village of Fox Lake for his efforts in their communities in 2015. Paul was nominated for Officer of the Year by two people. The first nomination mentioned, and I quote, Detective Grace embodies the essence of what it means to be a team player. He is an essential part of the Major Crimes Task Force, yet he does not let this deter him from giving a maximum effort in our Detective Bureau. I have worked multiple late night call outs with Detective Grace this year and no matter what the hour or the nature of the call, Detective Grace always arrives with a positive attitude ready to handle business. The second nomination came from Paul's supervisor. He mentioned that even with Paul's large caseload, he still had time to teach a class for the Citizens Police Academy this year. The community action team and shop with a cop were also activities that Paul participated in. Paul also took the time to evaluate the department's policy for the interview rooms and he recommended a change after reviewing it with the Lake County State's Attorney's Office. Finally, and according to a supervisor, his positive, enthusiastic attitude helps promote a constructive and productive work environment. So with this, I think you can see why Paul was selected as the Officer of the Year. The committee met and decided Paul was the Officer of the Year and I agree. Congratulations. <laughs> Came to our schedule. This is my my uh, mom who raised me. We knew Paul when he had hair. <laughs> now, Paul, did we have them all qual color coordinate like that, or does that just happen that way? <laughs> <laughs> I already asked his wife. She took care of the dressing for the yeah. family. <laughs> Should have known. Mayor, thank you very much. Thank you, Chief. And if anyone else wants to know more about what the Lake County State's Attorney Mike Nurheim does, you can go on our website at the villageroundlakebeach.org and watch our fireside chat from February. We had a nice chat for about an hour talking about everything the State's Attorney does in his office and all he's done for Lake County and for all of, all of you, everything he's done. He does a great job. Thank you, Mike, for being here tonight. Again, if anyone needs to leave, don't let us hold you up. Uh, we understand you all have things to do. If you'd like to stick around for a meeting, all the better, too. I promise I won't give another Swaco report. <laughs> but then I might. Hi, America. Take care. Bye, America. Bye, America. Bye. I see ya.
Parker, it's good to see all three of our police commissioners in the room at the same time. Yes, it is. Yep. Nice having you guys. Okay, our uh, next item of business is the Lake County Municipal League Resolution. We had a legislative breakfast at Reddit Cultural Center for all of Lake County. We had several legislators there. I believe uh, 13 different legislators were sh showed up. And they'd asked us to uh, pass a resolution urging that the state leaders pass an, a final budget for 2015-16, uh, which is coming to a close here in a few months. Uh, they have to get that done so they can start out for next year's budget. And this is kind of urging them to all try to work together and get this thing done. It's been too long and too many people are suffering because of it not being uh, completed. So is there a motion to approve? No move. Second. Motion by Trustee Valadez, second by Trustee Mount. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? In fact, I should probably have the clerk read that resolution. Okay. I'm ahead of myself. All right. Whereas the Constitution of the State of Illinois provides in Article 8, Section 2, that the General Assembly pass a budget based on proposed expenditures and estimated funds, and whereas the state of Illinois has been operating without a fiscal year 2016 state budget since July 1st, 2015, and whereas needed health and safety services and critical infrastructure services such as road construction, maintenance, and repair are negatively impacted by the lack of a state budget, and whereas the village of Round Lake Beach and every other unit of local government is directly and indirectly adversely affected by the failure of the General Assembly to pass a budget. And whereas consideration of cuts to local revenues and mandated property tax freezes in connection with the state's fiscal year 2016 budget threaten the stability and viability of local units of government. And whereas the village has done its part to meet its fiscal responsibilities and reduce expenses during and after times of economic recession, including significantly, significantly reducing its workforce, maintaining balanced budgets each year, and funding its pension obligations. And whereas the state's budget issues must not be used as an excuse to force uncertainty, uncertainty and financial instability upon units of local government and the residents who live there. Now therefore be it resolved by the President and Board of Trustees of the Village of Round Lake Beach, Lake County, Illinois, as follows. Section 1, the foregoing recitals are incorporated into this resolution as findings of the President and Board of Trustees. Section 2, President and Board of Trustees of the Village of Round Lake Beach call upon the Governor and General Assembly to discharge their respective constitutional duties and promptly adopt a balanced state budget for fiscal year 2016. Section 3, a copy of this resolution shall be for forwarded to the Governor, Senate President, Senate Minority Leader, House Speaker, House Minority Leader, Lake County Municipal League, and the Illinois Municipal League. Section 4, this resolution will be in full force and effect from and after its passage and approval. Thank you. <clears throat> what that's generally saying is we don't want the state to balance its budget on our backs. They have a lot of money that's passed through money that they receive that's supposed to go to the villages to pay for our police officers and our public works and our streets and everything else. They continually talk about t keeping that money to pay the state uh, bills because they haven't been fiscally responsible as we have. We have a balanced budget. We have a nice reserve in place in case, well, for when the, down the economy did downturn, we used part of our reserves. But we didn't have to cut services. We did uh, improve our staff, our productivity to make things run smoother at a less dollar amount. The state didn't do that. They just kept on sp spending like they always spent. Now they're in a bad position, and, but they need to make a decision to fix it, but not with our money. So. Okay, uh, pension board appointment. Uh, Ed Guru is up for appointment. Uh, I don't believe he's able to make it tonight, but I'd like to make that appointment. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Um, second. Motion by uh, Trustee Wallace, second by Trustee Mount. We have a motion and a second. Any questions? Please call the roll. Trustee Mount. Aye. Trustee Bennis. Aye. Trustee Valadez. Aye. Trustee Wallace. Aye. That's proof 4-0. And that's for the police pension board. They take care of uh, determining whether uh, someone's disabled, they receive disability, and so forth. Uh, 
and also for investing in the pension uh, for the police department. Item four is the Mayor's Day of Recognition for National Service. And this time I'll hey, ask the clerk to read the resolution okay. or proclamation first. National Service Recognition Day. Whereas service to others is a hallmark of the American character and central to how we meet our challenges. And whereas the nation's mayors are increasingly turning to national service and volunteerism as a cost-effective strategy to meet city needs. And whereas AmeriCorps and Senior Corps participants address the most pressing challenges facing our cities and counties from educating students for the jobs of the 21st century and supporting veterans and military families to providing health services and helping communities recover from natural disasters. And whereas national service expands economic opportunity by creating more sustainable, resilient communities and providing education, career skills, and leadership abilities for those who serve. And whereas AmeriCorps and Senior Corps participants serve in more than 60,000 locations ac across the country, bolstering the civic, neighborhood, and faith-based organizations that are so vital to our economic and social well-being. And whereas eight AmeriCorps VISTAs serve at Northern Illinois Food Bank, helping to solve hunger in our community. And whereas national service participants increase the impact of the organizations they serve with both through their direct service and by recruiting and managing millions of additional volunteers. And whereas national service re represents a unique public-private partnership that invests in community solutions and leverages non-federal resources to strengthen community impact and increase the return on taxpayer dollars. And whereas national service participants demonstrate commitment, dedication, and patriotism by making an intensive commitment to service, a commitment that remains with them in their future endeavors. And whereas the Corporation for National and Community Service shares a priority with mayors nationwide to engage citizens, improve lives, and strengthen communities, and is joining with the National League of Cities, City of Service, and mayors across the country to recognize the impact of service on the Mayor's Day of Recognition for National Service on April 7, 2015. Therefore, be it resolved that I, Richard H. Hill, Mayor of the Village of Round Lake Beach, do hereby proclaim April 7, 2015 as National Service Recognition Day and encourage residents to recognize the positive impact of national service in our city, to thank those who serve, and to find ways to give back to their communities. Thank you. Uh, those that serve do a lot for our country, and they learn a lot in the process also, especially in the AmeriCorps. They gain a lot of valuable experience in uh, the jobs they're doing, as, as well as help a lot of people that need the help tremendously. Uh, last couple of years I've helped out the Northern LA Food Bank up in uh, Park City to uh, load boxes and containers for different families in need, and it's, it's kind of an exciting time to go there. I, I hope that uh, as you grow up, you have time to also do those same things. Okay, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Motion by Trustee Bennis. Second. Second by Trustee Wallace. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Great, that's approved, thank you. Is there a clerk's report tonight? No work report tonight. Thank okay, move on out of business then. We have uh, item A, is a resolution approving the Intergovernmental Agreement with Lake County Metropolitan Enforcement Group. And Chief, I know uh, you had mentioned that earlier tonight that the uh, uh, Meg, uh, we're gonna be rejoining the Med, Meg Group uh, in Lake County. They do a great job investigating, especially in uh, drug, drug dealers and things of that nature that are very serious crimes that we want to eradicate in Lake County. And uh, we'll have to be part of that team again. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Most by Trustee Mount, second by Trustee Bennis. Any questions? Please call the roll. Trustee Mount. Aye. Trustee Bennis. Aye. Trustee Valadez. Aye. Trustee Wallace. Aye. That's approved 4 0. Item B is a resolution approving the purchase of equipment relative to the Northern Illinois Police Alarm System. Uh, we need to update the equipment that our officer uses uh, when he or she gets called out for the situation. That's beyond the capabilities of a single police department. They have a uh, it's called NIPIS, where they all kind of respond. All the different departments have one person that goes together that are very well trained and very well equipped for the most serious of uh, situations uh, to be the safest for the community and for the people involved, uh, the officers also. So we need to, uh, again, update all of our equipment for that. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Motion by Trustee Wallace, second by Trustee Valadez. Have a motion and a second. Any questions by the board? Please call the roll. Trustee Bennis. Aye. Trustee Valadez. Aye. Trustee Wallace. Aye. Trustee Mount. Aye. That's approved 4 0. Item C is an ordinance approving an agreement with NICASA Behavioral Services. Uh, NIC <clears throat> NICASA operates our team court at the Village Hall here. They've done it for probably 10 years, if not longer. Uh, 
Gotta be longer than 10 years since Chief Sindels is here, yeah. <laughs> uh, the funding's been diminished, uh, so we and other villages are subsidizing our efforts to continue the teen court, because it helps students get back on track after they make a mistake and break the law, usually something minor. We can get them straightened out and get them back on track to become good productive citizens. And I'm sure scouting has helped all, all you boys out here too, being good, good productive citizens too, and help your character, and you'll hopefully be the uh, teen court uh, jury rather than the uh, people in front of teen court. So do we have a motion to approve? So moved. moved. Second. <laughs> motion by Trustee Valdez, second by Trustee Bennis. We have a motion and a second. Any questions? Please call the roll. Trustee Valdez. Aye. Trustee Wallace. Aye. Trustee Mount. Aye. Trustee Bennis. Aye. That's approved 4-0. Item D is a resolution approving a use agreement for preferred caterers with professional beverage services. We're going to be adding a company to uh, provide liquor services for some of the smaller events at the cultural center. But they don't always use one of the large caterers that has a liquor service available. Uh, we have a lot of people ask for that, and I think it'll be a good fit for those smaller groups, and uh, they'll be able to uh, provide that. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Motion by Trustee Wallace. Second. Second by Trustee Mount. We have a motion to second. Any questions by the board? Please call the roll. Trustee Valdez. Aye. Trustee Wallace. Aye. Trustee Mount. Aye. Trustee Bennis. Aye. That's approved 4-0. Item E is a resolution authorizing and approving an award of contract to Peter Baker and Son in the amount not to exceed $1,977,577.35. This is the first phase of our road program for 2016. Uh, the bid came in uh, lower than expected, so we'll hopefully be able to do even more roads than we expected to do. We'll have phase two going out for bid shortly, and it'll probably be a, the same size bid, if not even larger, for even more roads. So we have a lot of programs going on this year. But unfortunately, you can see a lot of torn up roads. But when they're all done, it's all appreciated at that point. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. moved. Most by Trustee Wallace. Second. Second by Trustee Mount. Just a half a second, Larry. There gotcha. You go. <laughs> I have a motion to second. Any questions but by the board? Can't hear out of the left ear. Please call the roll. Trustee Wallace. Aye. Trustee Mount. Aye. Trustee Bennis. Aye. Trustee Valadez. Aye. That's approved 4-0. Item F is a resolution approving an award of contract to Brickman Group Limited in an amount not to exceed $62,000. This is our contract for landscaping for the village facilities and village-owned properties. Uh, we did quite a bit of work over at the Cultural Center this year that uh, they had to do a little extra work on that to make sure that that maintains properly and uh, uh, all the work that we and investment we put into that uh, surface over there for the ground uh, does grow properly and we don't end up losing it all. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Motion by Trustee Bennis. Second. Second by Trustee Mount. We have a motion to second. Any questions? Please call the roll. Trustee Mount. Aye. Trustee Bennis. Aye. Trustee Valadez. Aye. Trustee Wallace. Aye. That's approved 4 0. Item G. Is a resolution approving a change order relative to the village's agreement with USIC Locating Services LLC in an amount not to exceed $11,384. Uh, we had a very busy year this year with the uh, locates, underground utility locates for the uh, village uh, stuff, the pipes mostly we have underground. Uh, a lot more than we expected to have, uh, so we have to allocate more funds for the rest of the fiscal year. And uh, in a lot of the ways that's uh, a good thing. That means that the activity is starting to happen, uh, both people doing things around their homes and businesses, preparing to uh, do either new construction or remodeling, because that's when you have to have the locates done. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Motion by second. Trustee Mount, second by Trustee Valadez. We have a motion and a second. Any questions by the board? Please call the roll. Trustee Mount. Aye. Trustee Bennis. Aye. Trustee Valadez. Aye. Trustee Wallace. Aye. That's approved 4-0. Item H is a resolution approving an agreement with the Illinois Housing Development Authority relative to the blight recovery program. Uh, we received a $525,000 forgivable loan to demolish dilapidated properties. Uh, once the property has been demolished, the village will re be reimbursed using HSF resources with a maximum of about $35,000 per property. Uh, eligible expenses include the acquisition, closing costs, demolition, and lot treatment greening. All funds allocated as a three-year forgivable loan must be committed by December 31st, 2017. So we'll be able to take down several houses in the community that are in uh, bad shape, that are not worth remodeling, that just need to be torn down, and uh, offer some green space on those areas, at least uh, for the next three years or so, and then we'll determine later on, long-term, uh, what's going to happen to those properties. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Motion by Trustee Bennis, second by Trustee Valadez. We have a motion to second. Any questions? Please call the roll. Trustee Bennis. Aye. Trustee Valadez. Aye. Trustee Wallace. Aye. Trustee Mount. Aye. 
That's proof 4-0. Item I is an ordinance amending section 3-2-8 of the village code regarding Class B liquor licenses. We need to add two new uh, Class B liquor licenses uh, for the two video gaming cafes that are coming to town. They'll be serving uh, a lot of times prepackaged food and they'll uh, have video gaming, they'll have coffee, and uh, they'll have a little alcohol also. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Motion by Trustee Wallace. Second. Second by Trustee Mount. We have a motion to second. Any questions by the board? Please call the roll. Trustee Valadez. Aye. Trustee Wallace. Aye. Trustee Mount. Aye. Trustee Bennis. Aye. That's approved 4 0. That was the end of our business. It is now open to public participation. Anyone has a question or comment for the board, please step to the microphone, give your name and address for the record, and either state your comment or ask your question. Hello, my name's Jody Holtman. My address 1307 Witchwood in Round Lake Beach. I wanted to take a, this moment to thank the board for giving us, the scouts, the opportunity to present the colors. If you didn't know, Troop 275 and PAC 99, and then also we have uh, Venture Crew 1170, is sponsored by the American Legion Post in Round Lake Park. Uh, so that's a little bit about us. If you want to know more of what we're doing, you can go to our website, neictroop275.org, and you can see some videos and some other things that we do because we do a lot more than just camp. And then um, also I wanted to make you put on my other hat. I'm also the vice president of the Round Lake Education Foundation. So I wanted to make the board aware that the foundation is up and running. We began in 2014 and we're in the process of raising funds to fund uh, innovative, creative programs at the high school and elementary schools that don't have the funds available through regular school funding. Uh, we have funded the black box theater program, some lab equipment at the high school, and then uh, also some lenses for the camera photography classes that they have at the high school. We have um, a fun run coming up May 7th that uh, will be held over by the Park District building. But then as you talk about uh, volunteering, also the foundation feels that volunteering is also very important. We have a March 18th Feed My Starving Children event that we're uh, co-sponsoring with the school. The school's providing the buses so that the students, even though they don't have transportation, can participate at Feed My Starving Children. So that's just one of the opportunities. And then we're also uh, having tours of the high school once the construction's completed. So that'll be open to the public as well. Uh, and I just wanted, again, to thank the board for giving us the opportunity. As you can see, scouting is kind of rebounding back, and we're including uh, girls even in some of our things. So, uh, again, I just want to thank the board. Thanks. Thank you. have a great organization there. My boys went through both uh, the Troop 275 and also the Venturing Crew. They had a great time in those, and uh, thank you for all your leadership, Ms. Holtman. You've uh, done wonderful. You and your whole team there do a great job with the boys and girls and uh, giving them a good, better chance at a future life. Anyone else? Yeah, well, we don't have any uh, executive session tonight, so is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. Most by Trustee Mount, second by Trustee Bennis. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We're adjourned. Thank you, everyone.